I want to share with the church and let you all know what the Word of God says. I want you all to pay close attention. And look what this says. Here we go. James. James chapter 4, and I'm going to read the fifth verse. It says, Do you think that the scripture said in vain, the spirit that dwelled in us lusts to envy? I want you all to pay close attention to it. And the sixth verse, it says, But he give it more grace, wherefore he said, God resisted the proud, but give it grace unto the humble. Now I'm going to share this with you. You got many people operating in it, they don't know it. Look what I'm going to read. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'll read uh, just the fourth verse. It says, Charity suffered long and is kind. Charity envy not. Charity bought not itself, is not preferred. Pay attention. Charity envy not. That's what it start off with. <coughs> now, come to understand. Someone during the time of Jesus wind up saying he knew for envy they delivered Jesus. What was the reason of that being said? Come to understand. We have look what I'm reading. Matthews chapter 27 and 18 verse. And I want you all pay close attention to it. Matthews chapter 27 and the 18 verse. Just pay attention. Look what it says. It says, For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Talking about Jesus. Okay? Now, why am I saying that? Mark tell us Mark tell us this Mark chapter 15 and the 10th verse For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy Why am I saying that? They came out with the Pharisees. They came out with the chief priests. They came out with the Sadducees. They came out with the scribes. Notice, none of that did not line up to the scripture when God sent someone. During that time, it always did address prophets. Through the process of time of the children of Israel being rejected. Of what Samuel had said. Notice. When Jesus came out on the scene. During the time of Samuel, they had told Samuel they did not want to hear the voice of the prophet. 
They say they had wanted them a king like other nations. God had told Samuel, say, Samuel, they have not rejected you, but they don't reject me. Now, all the while as that of a prophet, they used to be called seers. Samuel came along and the Lord fulfilled it in addressing them as prophets. Now, there's a reason why Moses said the Lord your God should raise up a prophet like unto him, me. He said him. What did he say? The Lord your God should raise up a prophet like unto him. And him should they hear. And every soul that hear not that prophet would be what? Destroyed from the people, among the people. Now, why is this being said? Learn this. You're living in a day and hour. People are operating in envy and don't realize it. And they have a fullness doing of pride. And it always that of resist the truth. You're living in a day and hour. People address themselves as being used of God. But yet as being used of God. God don't have nothing to do with them as being sent. Spirits like that is, is envy operating. The Pharisees, see? The Lord didn't address nothing of them. Sadducees, chief priests, scribes, none of them. Like you have today, some say they got a certain kind of ministry. Apostolic. Or prophetic. There's no way in the scripture. Now learn this, Jesus walked the earth and he walked the earth as a prophet. Who did he choose? Twelve men. What he addressed them as? Apostles. The scriptures say Jesus prayed all night to choose them. That's why Ephesians chapter 4 let us know that God gave gifts unto men. By who? Jesus Christ. And he says, some he put in the church that is some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. Now, you got to come to understand what the Lord is trying to say. You got to know this and listen to what I'm going to read to you all to get to understand. Okay. Galatians chapter 5 tells us this. Galatians chapter 5 tells us this. Galatians chapter 5 the 13 verse To the 14 verse, the 13 say, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, come to realize it. Learn like this, envy has something to do with flesh. And come to realize it. What the Lord saying. Look what I'm going to read. Look what it's about. The 26th verse. It said, let us not be desires of vain glory, provoking one another, 
envy one another. Envy tied with vainglory. That's why you see the day they cannot understand the scripture of the women. What did the Lord say about the women? I suffer not a woman to teach no usurp authority over the man. Look what's happening in your church today. It says this. 1 Timothy chapter 2. 11. To the 15th verse. 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach no usurp authority over the man. But to be in silence. For Adam was first formed in Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she should be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with severity. Why am I saying that? I'm just getting you all to understand you living in a day and hour, people operating in envy. And don't realize it. Look what the Lord say this again. Second Timothy chapter 3. Look what the Lord say in the fifth verse. All the way to the ninth. Start at the fifth. It say, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and led captive silly women, led with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janice and Jabriz withstood Moses, so do these, do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt mind reprobate concerning the faith. But they should proceed no farther for the folly should be manifest unto all men as there also was. Now, look how the Lord saying that. And I'm going to go to Ezekiel chapter 13. And look what the Lord says. Chapter 13. Ezekiel chapter 13 and 18 verses say, and say, well, the 17 start now. The 16 verse, I'm going to start there. It say, to wit, the prophets of Israel is prophesied concerning Jerusalem, and we see vision of peace for her, and there is no peace, saith the Lord God. Likewise, thy son of man, set thy face against the daughter of thy people, which prophesied out of their own heart and prophesy die against them. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the women that sow pillars to, to all home holes, and make a shift upon the heads of every stature of, to hunt souls. Will ye hunt the souls of my people? And will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? And will ye pollute me among my people for a handful of barley and for a piece of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the soul alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lives. Now you hear what the Lord said. The 20th verse, it says, Wherefore thus said the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillars and wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly. And I will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go, even the soul that ye hunt, to make them fly. Your conscience also will I tear and deliver my people out of your hand, and they should be no more, and should be no more in your hand to be hunted. And ye should know that I am the Lord, 
because with lies she have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthen the hands of the wicked that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Therefore, ye should see no more vanity, no divine divination, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye should know that I am the Lord. Learn this. You see what envy is? Envy is no more than something saying that they got something and, and it coming in the name of God or Jesus and guess what? God have not given that to you. But yet you're going to take the act upon your own in operating it like the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the chief priests and the scribes. Okay, now look how this being said. So the church got to come to realize it. Anyone that go against the truth, they operating in it. That's why the Lord said the spirit in us lusts the envy. Try to get your understanding. Okay? That's why the Lord say about provoking one another, vainglory, provoking one another. And what is provoking one another? What it is provoking one another? See, what is provoking one another? Galatians chapter 5 put it plainly to the church. What is provoking one another? Galatians chapter 5 tell us this. Look what it says. The 15 verse, but if ye bite and devour one another, Take heed that you be not consumed one of another. You hear what's being said? And come to understand. That's why Jesus said this here. Don't get in caught up with that. Because he said, give not that which is holy unto dogs. Neither cast your pearl before swine. Lest they return again and rend you. Because envy is no more than that people with vain glory provoking one another. See? And guess what? That's why James tell us. I want the church here it plainly. That's why James tell us this. Okay. James put it plainly. James put it plainly to the church. Look what it is. James chapter 3, the 14, to the 16 verse, the 14. Start now, James chapter 3. But if ye have bitter envy and stripes in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom to sin not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. That's why the Lord say he's not the author of confusion. I got to understand. Now listen how the Lord put it. Okay. Look what 1 Corinthians Chapter 3 tell us. So on that. The third verse it says, For ye are yet carnal, for where is there is among you envy and strife and division? Are ye not carnal and walk as men? Why you always see the Lord talk about envy? In 
it is no more than what Galatians chapter 5 tell you. It's just simply people that don't want to live in the spirit. They want to live in the flesh. Look how Galatians chapter 5 put it. They don't want to bring forth fruit. Galatians chapter 5 tell you about the fruit of the spirit. The 22 verse to the 25th verse, the 22 verse. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such as no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affection and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. It don't want to walk in the spirit. Why? It's in flesh. It don't want to please God. See? And look what it's about, the 26th verse. Let us not be desires of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. You see how the Lord put it? It should not be in the church people provoking one another. Because it's envy there. And envy tied with vain glory of the flesh. Look how Paul had to explain unto him in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. The third verse is saying, For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and division, are ye not carnal and walk as men? The fourth verse, For why one say I am of Paul and another I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? The fifth verse, Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted a pile of water, but God gave the increase. The seventh verse put it plainly. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that water, but God that give it the increase. Now learn this. You hear what it was saying about this with Paul and that with Apollos. And it tells us even as the Lord gave to every man. See, what's being said is the Lord give you gift by grace. And that's why the Lord say, in the day and hour you living in. You're living in the day and hour what man is doing. Second Timothy chapter 3. And the 13 verses say, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now come to understand that it has something to do with the 6 and 7 verse. In the eight, for as thy, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and led captive silly women, led with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And look now, as Jennies and Jabris whispered Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt mind reprobate concerning the faith. What is it? The 13th verse, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. What I'm trying to get you to see, men that preach, teach, that a woman could usurp authority over the man. Put it simple like that. But the scriptures say, I suffer not a woman to teach, no usurp authority over the man. In the church, you see where I'm coming to them? Now, why the Lord is talking about envy? Because people got a misunderstanding of it. That's what it's all about. See? 
2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter in the 20th verse. Look what it says. For I fear lest when I come I should not find you such as I would, and that I should be found unto you such as ye would, not lest there be love. Debates, envy, wrath, strife, backbiting, whispering, swelling, turmoil. You see what the Lord's saying? And what you're seeing today, people debating. Look what go on with debating. All that envy, wrath, strife, backbiting, whispering, swelling, turmoil. Look like that's going on. When you be looking up on ministers, so they operating in envy. They operating in vain glory, provoking one another. So the Lord put in me to, to share this with you all about envy. See. And that's what's happening, people. Okay. And that's why this here scripture tell you this. In Philippians chapter 1 and the 15th verse. I'm going to read to 16. Well, 15 and 16. It says, Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of good will. The one preach of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bones bonds. The 15 verse, some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife and some also of goodwill. You see that going on all over the day. And a lot of them tell you this here, I go all over the world and preach the gospel, but look what they operating in. Envy, strife, Vain glory provoking one another. That's why I'm sharing with you all to let you know that God is not pleased. So, look how James, chapter 3, put it. The 14 verse. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not, and lie not against the truth. The 16 tell us where, where envy and strife is as confusion and every evil work. And look what it says. James chapter 4 in the 5th verse. Do ye think that the scripture said in vain, the spirit that dwell in us lust to envy? The scripture tells us charity what? Envy not. Now come to understand why the Lord say that. Okay. There's a reason why the Lord had me to talk on that. So you understand what envy is all about. It's all about vainglory. Strife. It's a contention. I'm going to read it to give you all an understanding. And pay attention to it. It says, 
listen to me. James chapter 3, 14 to the 16th verse. But the 14th verse, but if ye have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descend not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Are you listening? See, why did they do Jesus the way they did? God never did send Pharisees. He never did send chief priests. He never did send Sadducees, Pharisees, chief priests, scribes. That's the spirit there was operating, saying that it didn't know the commandments and teaching it. And what happened? He went against Jesus. Who was the one that knew Jesus when he came and walked the earth? It was those that kept the commandments. That's how you get to know God. To know God is to keep his commandment. To love God is to keep his commandment. See, and what is his keeping his commandment? It's the doctrine of Jesus Christ. You cannot know the commandments without the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Because when Jesus walked the earth, He just not only came to die for the world, but he gave us the church. He came to give us an understanding. Okay. He came to give us an understanding, people. Okay. Look what's his purpose. First John chapter 5, the 20th verse. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. Even in his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God in eternal life. You see how the Lord put it? And we need to come to understand what the Lord is saying unto us. Okay? We need to come to understand what the Lord's saying unto us. The Lord said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Why he say many? Because say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? It cast out devils. Did many wonderful work. He said, I'm a professor to you. I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. How did they never did get to know God? They forgot it. What caused you to forget God? It's not to do what he said. That's why he said, all nations that do forget God are going to be turned into hell. Forget God. How you forget him? By sin. 
If you don't do what he say, you sin. And what is sin? The transgression of the law. Now it's the reason why I'm saying that. That what was read unto you all. You see, they got a lot of people operating in envy and no more. No knowing. That's like this. This is a crucial moment. It's very crucial. It's very crucial, people. And you all better awaken to it and come to understand about it. Amen? Amen. 